read a couple of summers ago, Share some insights and can share some thoughts, and I hope it'll be with my Ellis. I had a thought that uh, the reason I'm standing here is it speaks part of Taldais. You know, Ella Taldais, Ella Taldais Yitzhak ben Abraham, Abraham Ella Yitzhak. So I'm here because uh, my uh, son uh, is Israel's parents, Israel's Taldais, so Abraham Ella Yitzhak. So they just let me, they put me here. Um, I want to. 
A lot of stories. There are a lot of stories around there. But I'd like to take a different approach, perhaps. Moses Rebison used to say, used to tell guys, you won't be a guy like my husband, but you can be a gentleman like my husband. And uh, Rebdoved in, in turn used to say, how many times my father finished Shas doesn't make a difference, it's not going to make a difference to anybody. Yeah. <clears throat> but as Chesed and the other things, the Hanhaka, his Midas, that's what we can learn from. So I want to discuss some glimpses. I'm going to give you some glimpses. I'm not going to give you Portrait. Here's some snapshots. Uh, David was on a plane with uh, Reyes Lotowitz. And they were going on a flight for a few hours. And they said that as soon as David sat down, he opened up his Gemara. He didn't pull his head out of the Gemara until they landed. Dealing with somebody who fundamentally was a mass medalist. A person who could sit down on a plane, not pick his head up out of the Gemara. You think a person like that, his whole life would be have his head in the Gemara. But he was, there was a Paris Chesed, who was a, there was so much more to him. There was Benaz Machaber, there was Benaz Machaber. Of course, what he knew, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meisha, used to say that anything I, any chance that I'm not around, you can go ask Rabbi Meir, he knows everything. Anything you need to know, he'll be able to answer, any psaac. I remember once he called me many years ago. Um, it was very difficult, computer search programs started coming out. It was an early version of one of the programs. He was looking for a car for a certain, he was looking to see Rashi brings in. Rashi brings out a certain thing. He wanted to know if it's brought down Malach anywhere. So I did a search and I said there's uh found one place. He goes, Oh yeah, it's the and I know that one. But the Shahatzin I know, but I didn't know if anybody else brings it down. He said, No, that was it. If he didn't if the computer if he didn't know it, the computer didn't know it either. That's the bottom line. Rilyashim called them the Pe'er Hadar, he called them the place of Hadar of America. There are some of them, I just found out yesterday that he, they, they have notebooks from him, there's a picture of it, of, of on all of Tilm, Sefer on all of Tilm. He has this form on every Mikzai of Tyre, on Shat, on Sofmar, on Malacha, on, on, I don't know if you know that, but uh, what's the name of yesterday? I'll tell you, I'm showing you, Aaron Price was showing me yesterday. The amount, of stuff, the amount of material that he wrote. He never wrote Chubas. He never wrote Chubas. But I'll tell you a story. He admitted, <laughs> Somebody I know, a, a lawyer, sent him a shot and his ribbons. And uh, he didn't respond. Many years later, this lawyer meets him and he says, I sent you a shot and you didn't answer me. He says, I don't have the time. I'm, I'm not my father. I can't write shulas. I don't write shulas. But your shayla was this and this and this, and this is the answer. So he had phenomenal memory. So do I have phenomenal memory? No, I don't. Do I have that as mother? Can I put sit down and learn for, for six hours straight? Maybe I can, but I don't. I, I haven't been able to bring that up to myself. So what does that mean? But what does that mean to me? That but I do have a status. I do have a certain I have a certain obligation. I do have a an arthritis to learn from him a little bit. Even though I don't have that memory, even though I don't have that brilliance that brilliance. He had everything, he had everything clone from him. You look at the Rotsko Stone Kumish, the Rotsko Stone Kumish, the other driving parasha. Every, at the end of the parish, every chumash gives you the number of sukkim, and there's a word. There's a simit. Something simit. So David, in his brilliance, and in his best understanding of color kula all at once, had an explanation of what that word has to do with the parish. At the end of every parish in the stone chumash, they put that in there. It took an incredible just being able to connect all the dots, being able to connect how everything comes together. A real gematria is not just geplup, it's not just this is the same as that, Biden is the same gematria as uh, the yo, whatever, you know, that's, that's not a real gematria, that's stuff that people make up. A real gematria is something based on knowledge of Kala Torah and what the Torah really is saying, and how the Torah brings that out through the words. Rav had gematria for everything. 
right? They have Yichumish, not not Yichumish, but a lot of times Yichumish is certainly that God is here. He built this year. He used to he used to have these gematries. They were like it was like wild. But that came from knowing and understanding and having it on his plate, knowing it clearly, understanding it on his plate. There's a famous bard that <coughs> the 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 tumim the tumim the tumim has a migul. You know what a migul is, right? The tumim has a migul. So they say that the guy could have had this real long dish of svara. He come to bed with this real long dish of svara that Mamish could have won the case from, and he didn't use it, so right, he's telling the truth. So the Veldi asks, the Veldi asks, so th that's the Tumim, had this, the Tumim had the Migos, the Tumim had this whole long list. But this farmer was coming to Bethany for the entire, he doesn't, he doesn't know all that long list, he doesn't understand, he doesn't, he doesn't know all those Kashbainas to come up with the time that could have won in the case. So the Veld says, that when it comes to his money, when it comes to his box, He'll figure out all the lumbas, he'll know all the lumbas. Turb David, everything was important. Every piece of Tyre was important. Every piece of information was important. Everything could be used for the service of Tyre. Several years ago, it was more than several years ago, it was when he was a chiv for his mother, for Rebetzin, for Rebetzin, for Alter Rebetzin, so, so, for the Rafa, so he was in Baltimore. And Rabbi Heinemann came to him, he said, we have to discuss baking, Oat matzahs, because some people grew up in Africa them to eat to eat meat matzahs. So Rav David discussed it with him, and he tells him, "By the way, you have to toast the oats before you bake them. You have to toast the oats before you bake them." So Rameis Lados is with him, so he asks him, "What's the basis of that halacha?" He says, "It's not a halacha. I read it. We just died just as a teenager. I read that you have to toast oats before you bake them." So here's he's pulling up information that's. 60 years old, about, right? But it's all in the service of Torah, because when you need to be able to pass on a shayla, when you need to be able to, with the chlorkite, when there's a passion, it's like the farmer who should come up with the most long dish of svara for Amigo, when it helps him, the guy and a guy and can remember reading his artist article from 60 years earlier, when it comes to Torah, when he needs to know it. He didn't talk much, Rav David. Rav David didn't talk very much. He was known to not talk. He used to say himself that he didn't talk much. Ramesha used to say, Ramesha once said, Ramesha said by, uh, by his oldest son, by, by David's oldest son, David said, that uh, that's also their Hatayra. He used to come to Nayatza's meetings, and he didn't talk. Unless he was asked for his opinion, he didn't talk. He, I know this from people that were at the meetings, that they told me this. That he just didn't, unless he was asked a specific question, I was, at a, I was at a conference once with medical professionals and uh, nursing home people and medical professionals and we were was discussing life and death shadows. And um, one of the nursing home people there didn't like his position, his halakhic position. All of us didn't agree with this halacha. And he got up and he said, I suggest the Rosh Hashiva rethink his position. So, first of all, I lost all my respect for the guy. But uh, the other just responded with, I don't remember what his response was. He gave a very humorous response. Like, it didn't bother him. He just. It wasn't about him, it was about the halacha. I'm glad you think that, you know, have a nice day. On the other hand, when the Holocaust survivor who was there was also very basic in, in, in medical issues. When she got up and gave, you know, spoke about this halacha, so he gave her a much, a very nice, um, compassionate response. This guy gave a humorous response to him. But he was able to, he was able to, Keep quiet in the face of abuse. I don't have a better way to say it. I mean, anybody else? I mean, I felt like getting up, and I was sitting next to somebody else, a friend of mine, and he tells me, did he just say what I thought he said about the Balabas? Did he just say what I thought he said? We were going to get up and smack the guy up. It was like, he was older than me. He's old. His kids are older than me. Well, my sir, the Rav just, he didn't get offended. He didn't get upset. He didn't, 
just respond to the thing the first thing and try it again. How do you pass in a shot? How does a Pisces pass in a shot? You have a Mishnah Burush, and the Mishnah Burush, and David gave a Mishnah Burush. It's not to put that in the Mishnah Burush, clearly. David gave a Mishnah Burush every Friday morning. But how do you pass in a shot? How do you teach someone about that? I'll tell you my first interaction with Rav David. My first interaction with Rav David was in 10th grade. And some of you in 10th grade might be able to you know, associate with this. Um, I ate a pretty big lunch, shall we say. Without going into all the gory details. Among the things that I ate was a pack of Swiss fudge cookies. And a bunch of other mezainas. And uh, so somebody told me they might have to bench. So I went to the uh, go-to guy in yeshiva. We were doing this, little, this was before cell phone days. Um, we went on the way to the east side, and uh, I go over to this go to the guy in the in yeshiva, and I said, uh, "What's the deal?" He said, "I think you better call Rabbi So, until about 10, 15 years ago, how do you reach the place together? Or really, he was the place together. Then Rabbi Shimon told him, "Well, but still, <coughs> even if he was the Paisa Kadar, how do you reach the Paisa Kadar until about 10 years ago? He called the pay phone. You know where the pay phone is? Public phone outside the hallway in MTJ. And you called the phone, and some Shogun answered the phone, or some homeless guy, and he went to call the Rashiva, because MTJ lets everybody in, because that's the Feinstein Chesed. Everybody gets in, everybody gets, uh, everybody gets a thing. And uh, so they, they called him to the phone. So it was only many years later that I realized what was going on in this conversation. So we're discussing the cookies. So what's the weight of the cookies? How many cookies are in the back? You know what the cookie was. How many cookies are in the back? What's the ingredients? Okay, now let's figure out how much flour there is in a cookie. So that's estimating. You have to take off for the chocolate, this and that. He was teaching me how you pass in a shiloh. He was teaching me how you analyze a real Real life shayla. It's not just you go to the rub, you bench, you don't bench. The shayla is let's go through the tennis object. Let me explain to you how you think this through. You know, there's a story from Shlomo Zalman. Shlomo Zalman, know about it. The new, they bought a new Sefer Torah in Kol Torah, the Yeshiva in Kol Torah. And all the latest state of the art, Hidurim, all the latest Chumris, everything that everybody figured out, there was never fear to, that Kali Sol never practiced in hundreds and hundreds of years, all the latest Shittas and Chumris and everything else, they, this Sefer Tiger had it all. It was like state of the art with all the Chumris. So somebody came to him, was right push for him, and he said, he'd like, maybe they should lay in Parsha Zohar, which is the Dairaisa. Lay in Parsha Zohar is Dairaisa. So we should lay this. This parish is up, which is the the Sefer Tire, this latest, greatest Sefer Tire. So Shlomo Zalman said, no, you know, lend it to old Sefer Tire, the one that we use all the years. So the guy says, I'll switch the mantle on the Sefer Tire so that nobody realizes that we're using the new Sefer Tire. Everybody will think that we're using the old Sefer Tire. We won't be Mabaz at old Sefer Tire, but we'll use them as it is. Shlomo Zalman said, no, we're going to use the old Sefer Tire. The guy tells from his own, he says, You know, there's a there's a side. Don't do bad, but you can do good. So the Lord Zalman said, I will do, I will be served up on the same Yais type as all the Gedalim did until now, until our door. Somebody just wrote an article. He wrote an article in one of the papers that maybe that you know a sheet is a sheet that was uh, has become popularized recently, that uh, that before you title a an object for the title of Kaylee, you have to own the Kaylee. The store owner can't title it for you. It has to be titled by you, because it's probably to, uh, item that you want to, to an item that you own and sell, you don't have to title it. So the Kaylee of, of, of Sneel only is called when the final purchaser buys it. So this guy went ahead and wrote an article like this. And he mentioned the term David on Halmai Pesach, I think he said it was the Pesach. And the David Namish Gabul Angriana. He said, the guy comes, we have hundreds of years of Messiah, that this isn't the case. All of a sudden, somebody writes a shita, and all of a sudden, this becomes the new halal. What are you? Is that a gift? Yeah, you want to give it. Then he found out that a store owner called Jabdavid, right before Pesach, that he had titled all the kalim in his store, 
And now you have to retitle it because he heard that this guy wrote the article that you have to title the king, that you can't title the king. He had the, we have to serve in Kali Yisro. Yes, there is a Mishnah Bura, and yes, there is a Rafa Shotan, and yes, there are Sfarim that we use that we pee on Ichayim, and we don't know what to do. But when Kali Yisro does something, when Kali Yisro does something, there's a value to what Kali Yisro does. There's a Minik Yisro, and that's not to be made away with. Just because some a sheet the whole not like that, but if Kali Yisro holds like that, you can't just not have egg. That's what. That's also a psychology. Once came to him, they used to come to him and ask him, what did your father hold that something? There were certain sheep that their beloved held differently than their wife should do. <coughs> so he asked him what he held. He told him, he asked him what he held. He told him. He asked him what his father held. The good old days, I don't know, lately, maybe he answered more nicely. He didn't say, go ask my father. <laughs> but a psak requires knowing the situation and knowing what's going on. I dealt with him on a lot of different things. Very good to do a lot of different things. And you have to know, you have to know who's asking, what you're asking about, who you're going to, what you're going from. And that's the role of a Paisic. A Paisic doesn't just look at the facts and open up a safer. And he has to apply the title. There's an art. There's a, it's, Chazal tells us, and this brothers, right? He tells us, is my Moritz? We should, and one sheet that says, Mishakara, Mishana, he learned, and everything, Allah Zatni did. He knows everything. He didn't, what Mishana is telling me the Chacham? See, he does, he's an Amorit. Because he doesn't know, he knows everything. He knows a vast amount of information. But he doesn't know how to apply that information. And David was the, was the guy that was able to apply the whole breadth and length of Torah to any given situation. Whether it was Dina and Nefashis, whether it was the Nickel, whether it was the Shalabad and Nickel. Everything. Was able to do. He was the he was the most not just take a person, he was the sweetest person. He could turn away from dealing with the most complex shadows of a bunch of guys, guys coming from, from Lakewood who was learning to be Dayanim and they come to him with the most complicated fashion Mishma Shaivas. And he could turn away from them and deal with the homeless guy who has nobody to talk to and nobody cares about and talk to him. The same guy in Hagainim can be the friend to every human being, to every single person, whether it's a little kid or an adult. And 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 yet and yet when he came to Halacha, he wanted to be firm. He recognizes other people. The Gemara tells us why why do we pass them like they sell the shame? They tell you not only what they hold, but they tell you what they shall my hold. I won't tell you if he asked the Mashad, he told him what he held. He told him what he held, but if you told but if, but if, but if somebody else followed a different pricing, that's fine. Somebody else followed a different pricing, that was fine. But when you have to be firm, you know how to be firm. Decades ago, there were very sticky shilas about unpleasant situations. And and he took a very strong stand. He took a very strong, unpopular stand that people have to be turned into authorities for certain, for certain for doing things to certain people, doing things for, for, for harming other people. And it was another, the, 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 the outspoken, some of the most outspoken regime then was very much against it. And Rav David stood his ground and he forced the issue. When he had to force an issue, he forced an issue. I know, uh, I'm empty, my, 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 my close relationship the relationship that I enjoyed with your David was born from um, it was born in the following. Um, many years ago, Mr. Tsushalayim started having an annual dinner. He hadn't had dinners for decades. He started having an annual dinner. And uh, they needed somebody to pull things together. The office was not so much so there. And uh, I guess this can repeat itself. So this was not some of the there, and uh, and the really felt that uh, I could pull things together a little bit. So he sent me an MPJ to help out. There's a certain Andrew David 
Minister of Government uh, agreed that that's what had to happen and that's what I should be doing and I should take the final opportunity to do that. The time there was a uh, very close to the rub from the Grand MPJ and uh, he came over to me to talk to me like, why are you doing this? You should be Shiva, this and that. I said, yeah, I should be, but uh, they told me to do this. So this is what God wants me to do today. So this is what I'm doing. Um, and this went on for a few days. And finally, I went over to Doug and I said, what should I tell him? So I said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. He never came over to me again. I know what Rabbi told him. I know what he did, but he never came over to me again. He never came over to me again about other things. He never came over to me again about this. You know how to be tough. You know how to be firm. Um, you know, there was shyness once about uh, <clears throat> there was shyness once about certain certain books that uh, people were signing Isser against. It was very controversial. The Isser and uh, and Rabbi David signed the Isser and. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on him, a lot of people arguing with him. Not crazy people, but other people, other communities. And just remember that Rib David had a very close relationship with everybody. He was able to talk to anybody from any background. Some of, his close, some of the people closest to him are very, very modern Orthodox. And some of the people very close to him are very, very Haredi. And, so, and everything in between, the whole gamut of people, not only in Psat, in closeness, people that came to him for advice and this and that, there was certain Things that, you know, he was straight thinking. He thought straight, he thought a lot, and that's what people appreciated about it. You know, there's a, my story, they were in Toronto a few years ago for, uh, for they collected money of David, of David dedicated untold hours over the past few years to collecting money to save, to help save French Jewry. French Jews, they, they were they were in public school, they were assimilated. But as anti-Semitism rose there, and as the Muslims moved in, as Harry as mentioned yesterday, and, and as I said, the, 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 the Jews started moving, they became more willing to put their kids in yeshivas. But the yeshivas had to expand, they had to accommodate these kids. So when David joined, joined uh, several rabbis and other Rashi yeshiva, and he was, a, he was a driving force behind this campaign to raise money for French Jews. He said, no chance to French Jews, but he had the Christ to follow yourself. And if French Jews needed to be helped, he was there to help them. And he went to, he went to, they went to Toronto to collect money, and I won't mention the name of the Rev, the Rev and the Rosh Hashiva who were with him. And, uh, and uh, they're eating, they, they're having lunch, by a fellow, I won't say his name, more, a more modern fellow, and they're having lunch there, and this Rebbe and this other Rashi wouldn't eat, and the Dove is eating. So you tell him, Dove, how many eat it? They definitely be sure. They're from people. They tell me it's coach, I'm allowed to eat it. That night, they go to see the person's house, and this Rebbe and this Rashi are eating supper, and the Dove's not eating. So they ask him, what's going on? What gives? But he ate over here, not eating. He says, we're traveling. I've never been to the We didn't have a marriage in Malani. Halacha! Not svara, and not boif, and not what, you, you, not what your kishka tells you. What the halacha says? The halacha says, the Tiger says, that a ben is Yerush, and a bas is not Yerush. That's the halacha. So now what happens? Somebody wants to give the, they want to give the state differently. So you can write a will, right? You can write a will. So there are halachic, some hoiskin hold there's a halachic thing in writing a will. So they write a whole thing, it's called the Star Fatsi Zachar, passage earlier, Yachrayim. I'm not dissing it, I'm not knocking it. There's something called the Star Fatsi Zachar that you, you can divide your Yerusha, where you're giving it as a gift before you die, so the girl gets some of the, some of the things. So, he decided he's going to write the Shtar Chazi, he's going to do one of these halachic things. He got the Bible Cones very into it. He's very intact. He and a friend are going to write these things. And they're going to go. So he goes to David and he tells, he goes to David to meet with him how to write such a Shtar. I want to write a Tzavo in Tyra. He says, okay. So Tyra says, but the, girl, the boys get, the girls don't get. He says, I know your son in law is, but it doesn't change what the terrorist says. The terrorist says one thing. Don't convince yourself that you're doing something, I'll be tired when you're doing something.
so I'll be tired enough to get around the tire. You're doing a gerrymander, you're doing a, you're jerry rigging something. That's, you think more, the tire says something. You want to do something so they'll be tired. That there's nothing wrong with writing a will. There's nothing wrong with dividing your estate some other way. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you're doing it some other way, don't convince yourself that you're doing what the tire says. You're not doing what the tire says. The tire says the boys get, the girls don't get. Don't come with crazy fringe Don't come with, with chesbainis. The tire is glad. The Moshe once told somebody. The tire is, the guy came back to Moshe again and again with a certain story. Moshe says, the tire is so straight. The tire is so glad. Why do you have to be crude? The tire is straight. The tire is neemistic. The tire is sweet. The tire is gewaldic. Just go straight. Just go glad. Just go with the tire. Don't try to find all sorts of things. He couldn't stand fake. He couldn't stand trying to do something. I'll be tired in the chill. I'll be tired. Precision in tires, precision in sack. There's just a story going around now. Two guys came to him. One, one guy walked away to your ladder where watch on shadows. One guy came around the ladder where you watch on shadows. So inside, they're going over there together. So the, the guy is here to David. A ladder where you watch on shadows, but there's no air, obviously. So David says, uh, Yeah. So the other guy says, But you told me no. He says, No, you asked me if you should be a watch on shadows. Should wear watch and shabbos. He is, if you can wear watch and shabbos. Yes, you can wear watch and shabbos. So when you hear a thousand psalms from Rabbi David, don't believe any of them. Because you have to know exactly what was asked and exactly what was answered. I know myself, I had, we had a Misa, there was a document that had a legal thing, not a legal thing, there was a, there was a letter that had to be signed to somebody who was a nerdiff in a certain case. And involved, there was a complicated get, whatever it was, and uh, Rabbi David was going to sign a nusach about his opinion on the status. I can tell you that I spoke to him. I spoke to him. The one, it was a Friday. Probably spent 40 minutes on the phone, understanding what he wanted to say, sending him like 12 different drafts, just trying to say what he wanted to say, until we finally came up with the nusach that he exactly wanted to say. And that's what he was ready to sign. I have it in my hand. <laughs> but it was like, till, it was so precise. You have to be exactly, exactly, exactly. When you hear Psachim, General Psachim, just realize that they <coughs> get to exactly what was asked and exactly what was answered. These are all things that we can assimilate in our own life. These are all things that we can, when we can learn something, learn what a clerk type, learn how to apply it, understand how it works. How it filters down. It's not just some random Gemara. It's not just, you know, it's not just, it, it's not just a, so it's not, it's not church. It's a car that went into a bank. It's a car that went into somebody, somebody's house. It's not, it's not random. It's not a, it's not a bleak. It's not the, it's not, it's not Muflo Vimani. It's, it's like the Marine Gumi Kenna. Okay, that's about her. I'm going to take another few minutes and then I'll wrap up. I'm sorry if I'm going over time. I don't know what time I start. His avoider, his avoider had a list of chalim that, that he does the stall for every day. A guy came to him once, and, and just heard the story yesterday, a guy came to him and introduced himself. He came to him, and he said, I know you are. He tells the, the, he tells the guy his name with his mother's name. Three and a half years earlier, the guy came to him to be the him. He was still being the stall for the guy. Three and a half years later, and he knew who he was. Because every Jew mattered to him. His avoider used to go, there was a store on the east side called Lecha Asfar and Jack Alden around the corner from the yeshiva. He used to run there during the day, he used to hide, hide himself in the back office. Jack Baldwin would uh, stand guard to make sure nobody bothered him. And he'd say, tell him. He'd go there, he'd say, hours, spend hours saying, tell for people. I sell for people. None of the Khamera. It was just incredible. You know, by my, my daughter's chasana, my son-in-law has a young Rosh Hashiva. And uh, his family wanted very much that the, his Rosh Hashim should be Mazadi Kedushin. Except he told my son a little bit, if Rav David's there, he's not going to be Mazadi Kedushin. Um, they asked me if I had wine. I said, it's not wine, you know. Yeah, I've been my Chavruz in elementary school. Um, the, the young Rosh Hashim. But, uh, but the truth came. 
I realized later on that I could always pun him. I tried getting David to come over to the head table, but he come out by the reception, for a couple. He wouldn't come over because he didn't want that Rosh Hashiva to see that he was there. So he wouldn't come over to the head table. You know, by my chasana, there was a shadow of the kibbutz of this, that, and that I was told I had to give somebody a kibbutz. And uh, I found out that there's a thing that certain rabbanim won't come to a chasana if they don't get a kibbutz, an appropriate kibbutz. Um, having grown up for 10 years under, under the Feinstein Mishpacha, it was like a little interesting to me that such a thing exists. But I figured that's the way it is. That's the way it is. So I didn't have a bracha for a bracha. If I gave this person a bracha, I was told I had to give a certain person a certain rabbi in yeshiva bracha. And I gave him, I went to David, I said, what do I do? He said, give him a bracha. I said, I never have brachas. So he said, are you giving me a bracha? I said, yeah. I said, okay, so give him my bracha. So I said, I mean, you come to the kasan anyway. And he looked at me like I was crazy. He goes, of course I'm coming to the kasan here. Like, what does one have to do with the other? He would just, he just didn't care, he just cared about people. There's been a story from a guy in Baltimore who writes a story, he grew up on the east side. His mother was wheeling a shopping cart one, one day, and the wheel came off. The wheel came off the shopping cart. And she's trying to figure out what to do. All of a sudden, she sees a guy bend down and put, starts putting the wheel on. And then she takes a look, and it's tripped up in Feinstein, putting the wheel on her shopping cart on, on, on Grand Street. And she's like, She's like a pool, like, could you please stop? She goes, why should I stop? So she goes, so she goes, I, I, I can't ask you to fix my car. She goes, you didn't ask me to fix my car. I came over and I'm fixing your car. And he fixed her, he fixed her shopping cart. He said, Adam Godel, every shell of the world is coming to him. Everybody's running to him, coming to him for profits, coming to him with problems, and he is standing there putting a shopping cart, a little lady, a shopping cart, a wheel on a woman's shopping cart. He's a Muna. Is a monarch shooter, and what the monarch shooter he demanded of others. A guy from Chafetz Chaim writes this wrote that he met Reb David twice. One time they met Reb David. He, a friend of theirs, had lost the, their mother, and he and his friends had gone to him and And they didn't know what to say. They were sitting there with nothing to say. And they just sat there, and they sat there, and then he said, I'm walking to him, and they walked out. And then, they see Reb David coming in. They said, great, we're going to get a lesson how to be Menachem Avos. They go in, and Reb David sits down. And it's a repeat. Nobody's saying anything. Reb David's not saying anything. David Elman is saying anything. Nothing. Nothing. Just show showing the person that you care about them, you were there with them, and that's it. Then one of the Avi goes, somebody was here, they, they told us that our mother it was Nifty Young. She means that she was she, she fulfilled her task in this world. Other people took 20, 30 years longer, and she did it when she was young, and she fulfilled her task in this world, her purpose in this world, and that's why she died. And if David tells him, we don't know anything. Avishta does what he has to do. And we don't. We don't make sure. This is a man who lost a son. This is a man who lost a granddaughter. This is a man who suffered with every sorrow that Kali Yisrael had. He told some of a friend of mine two years ago. He told a friend of mine, he said, I feel like the Malach Hamavas. Every day of getting shadows, being the Fasha shadows, morning, night, afternoon, all day long, I feel like the Malach Hamavas. And he can say, and, he, and like my wife said, she never saw without a smile. He was always smiling. One in the newspaper, one in the magazines had a very serious picture of him. On the cover. He goes, that's not him. That's not him. He's always smiling. He was always surveying. I'm not saying he was never sad, but he was but but this person who went through so much and lived with everybody saw us. He's known that we know that that thing that they was just converted, so we don't try to say and guess him. We don't try to understand him. And we'll know. These are all things that we can do. The man who had no time, the man who didn't talk. When they're on the half of the match, when, a, when an abandoned person, when a person with the sorry came to him, and all the time in the world, we went with him once. Well, I'm going to wrap up with this story. My wife and I once were involved with a young lady from a, from a troubled home. And she got married and there were problems in the marriage. And we made an appointment with her. The appointment started when it was supposed to start. 
It ended whenever the conversation ended. He had all the time in the world. The man who had everybody waiting for him, the man who had everybody, everybody's needs on his head, the man who was busy with the shadows of polyestrol. When a person needed physic, when a person needed help, he was there for them for as long as they needed, as much time as they took. And as many words as it took, this person who didn't talk, whatever talking it took to give a person chizuk, he was there and he gave it. And those are all things that we can do. It should be a schuss for him, it should be a schuss for us. I know what I just did. It should be a schuss for him, it should be a schuss for us. And we should walk in his ways a lot. Gemara says, Chazal say, Bokum Shat Barakaz Baruchu, that Bokum Shat the Moitzik Lossa, Shaman Tamoitzai, Mosonasai. When you find the Kaz Baruchu's greatness, that's where you find his humility, that's where you find his understatedness. So Allah, the Dabakta, the Dibakta, the Dabakta, the Allah, the Drakha, requires that of us too, that as great as we might be, as accomplished as we might be, and accomplished as we'll be in life, we should never forget to be humble and help others and have a muna and learn. some of the ideas that he said, but with my own signaling, and uh, two things will come together. <clears throat> Just, uh, he mentioned about the stone, the stone kumish, with all the, with all the simonim, that definitely uh, someone looks at it, and you see, it just looks one word sometimes, two words, uh, you know, with the gematria of how many took him there were in the parsha. And you look at his explanation, just where obviously he drew on a wealth of information just to be Mavar the <coughs> just to be Mavar the Simon and it shows of the Kiyas oh. Atreya that he had. Just to add on is that uh, someone once told me, someone a uh, 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 to him, someone once told me, said, you know, I love it, I really so shortly after you know, I really appreciate, you know. This Monday, you wrote that. It must have taken you a while. How long did it take you? About an hour. Now, if you had been, there's 52 parshas or whatever. 52, I think. And sometimes there's two pshatim over there, so a minute per, per, per simon or what? So, right, put it down. It just shows the bikiyas that he had and, and, and the mental type is to put it together. <coughs> He had an encyclopedic mind, but like Rav Riedemann said, and like my grandfather used to say, that when you tell over these stuff about Ramesha, that that's not going to be my other people. That's, they were, Ramesha was a genius. What does that have to do with me? You say about my grandfather. So he was a genius. So what does that have to do with me? What does that have to do with us? And we tried to, to follow him in ways that we could follow him. We weren't necessarily blessed with those abilities. Of course, definitely, the person puts in the effort, at the end of the day, the Rosh gives him a scar, and he's able to learn more and more. And that he's, he's able to, to have places that he didn't necessarily have originally. But after the king, it seems that he had a, 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 an extraordinary, an extraordinary, you know, gift that not all of us were given. But we also know 
famous um, being described is, is uh, was his, his, his anivas, his pashtas and his anivas, that even though he was who he was and the god who he was, he looked at him, he couldn't tell. He watched him, of course, he saw him learning, but, but he watched the way he interacted with people, smiling after everybody, and chiming after everybody, and what the casual conversation wasn't necessarily about a concise or the Tom Hutton, that's what it was. If they wanted to come talk to him, that's what he would talk to them about. If somebody wanted to talk to him about the weather, about what's on sale, that was also part of his conversation. So he wouldn't necessarily pick that up. That was part of his anivas. I heard a word once it says Yaakov and Esau were born. Vayikrushmoi Esau. Esau was the one who came out first. They called his name Esau, Vayikru. They called it. It comes to Yaakov, the Pasuk says Vayikrushmoi Yaakov. So everybody called Esau. And Yaakov who was either Akhazash Baruch Hu or Yitzchak. I mean, uh, two Peshach. I heard from Don Segal. <laughs> What's, what's the Indian? What's the Torah telling us over here? For someone like Esau, everyone could uh, call him and give him a name. A name is meant to tie up a person, to tap into his mitzvahs. But for Yaakov, that, that was for uh, either the Rebbein Shoma or for Yitzchak. Usually you'll hear Gedoyim being master of Gedoyim, to, you know, help uh, tie up and to tap into a uh, all of God's essence. Not, I'm just trying to say over what it looks like to me. I did have a close view of him growing up. Like our vitamin said, is Amuno. And the Amuno was something that. In years past, what it seems is this is, in the good old days, this is what everybody had. This is the hakar and the realization of the Rabbi Nishalel. <coughs> and if you hear, if you hear Dibre Torah, he mentioned the Rabbi Nishalel constantly, but not necessarily with the speech that I need to give now to explain what a Muna is, but with just a reality and an understanding that there is a Rabbi Nishalel, that's a given. And with the understanding of what the Rabbani Shalom wants from us. There is a Rabbani Shalom, and I'm a Yid, and I have an Afrayas to live. I have an Afrayas to live my life the way the Rabbani Shalom wants me to live it. To be a Yid. That being the case, just apply. We have to wish come, Yeshev Ayhalim. He was a Yashiv Ayhalim. He just sat and he learned. He was facing what the Rabbi Nishayim wanted. Whatever he did was because that's what the Rabbi Nishayim wanted, his Taira. Because the Rabbi wants to learn Taira. His Avaida. The Rabbi Nishayim wants to Avaida. And his Chesed towards other people. Avada, that's what the Rabbi Nishayim wants also. So everything that he was doing, everything what he was doing wasn't for himself. Everything that he did, the way he, just his outlook in life was, there's a Rebbein Shalom, I'm going to do what he wants, so whatever he wants in this particular situation, that's what I'm going to do. And that's, that what, that's what ran his life. Without a personal bias, without a personal paneer. So when he sat down and learned, he learned with the glad guy. He learned not necessarily to say a great part. <coughs> he learned because this is Teres Hashem, we're going to find out what the Rebbein Shalom says. And of course it was sweet to him. 
And so he sat and learned. And since he learned with that in mind, and that was his mahalat with his black guy. So, by the Pashas, he was like, Masuke Shmait Salim and Hilkasa, and to become the Paisa Kadwa, and the one that everybody wanted to hear, what he has to say. Because when he was saying over what he had to say, it wasn't personal. He was saying over what it says in the Torah, the way he sees it. He didn't, remember, said there could be other opinions, and he didn't force it on him. That, how, why did he see it that way? What he saw? Which is his spotless, his spotless to the fire of Elam, and his spotless to the Torah, just sitting, sitting where. Now, I'm not sure, I'm not such a, an older fellow, but like I said, this was something it seems in years past in other countries <coughs> that the, the attitude, the attitude, maybe he did have special gifts that made him a Tamil and a, 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 a Muslim. But the, 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 the attitude of that I'm a and there's a bunch of them in this world, that was a given. But he was came to America at a very young age, at a very young age. And it seems, it seems in America it's not so easy because there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of distractions. And everybody can understand what I mean. I'm sure you've heard about it. And I don't need to go into detail. I'm just going to use the word noise. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise that could be mafria, that could distract a person from what should be his goal and from the reality. My grandfather didn't get distracted from the noise. Not as a little kid. And not when you get older and there's other types of distractions. I mentioned you know, COVID could have come to him and did come to him, but he didn't get distracted. That's noise. What's I'm only doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I, that's something that probably everybody's doing, or they should be doing. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. People want to pour it on. It did not make a difference to him. He did not change one iota anything that he would do for what people would say. <coughs> Obviously, within the Pedro, sometimes an Adam Gadol has to speak the way, has to think and act the way an Adam Gadol has to act, because there are people watching him. But that's also, if those Chayfainas were involved, and you didn't see that so much, but if those Chayfainas were involved, that's also because that was Ratzanah Bayan, but nothing personal. Nothing personal. And nothing, nothing was able to distract him from Chayvasay Bayan. That being the case is also his Bayhadmatabeiroi, like we said. It's also that's what the Bainsham wants. But since it was nothing personal, so anyone anyone you'll hear from that had an interaction with him, it was only a pleasant interaction. You don't only have good things to say. Because it was not it wasn't it was nothing personal. Nothing personal. what he cared about. This is how he acted. This is how he lived. And the more we could do that, the more we could do that, we'll become the next Gadol Adar. Will we become the next Paisa uh, Gadol? I don't know. Everybody has a idea to try. And uh, it's definitely a good recipe. It's definitely a good recipe. But if we don't, we'll have still be, have done the best we can. And that's what the Rebbein wants from us, just to live. <coughs> to live the way he wants us to live, without getting distracted. And that is something that's incumbent 
I'm one of us to try to do. Just to and with a couple of <coughs> a couple of stories to bring out the point. I want to bring out the point of Sarah to Matt. Is when a person has a sakara of soul and he knows what's important, it's, 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 not that, it's not that Yiddishkeit comes second. Uh, do I, do I also have responsibilities. It's also a mitzvah to die. It's also a mitzvah to learn. It's also a mitzvah, you know, to, 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 to take a look. It's also an Aveira not to do this. It's, it's not a separate thing. This is our our. our our basic, uh, our basic responsibility. I'm not saying, uh, I think this is something that we all know. And again, the main thing is not to get distracted. And the, the, the less we get distracted, the better off we are, and the more we'll be able to do that and mekayim the Ratzon Hashem. But the person understands that these things come first, a different way of setting up your life. And Yaina says, I'm the first mission on Abbas. Asusi Yagla Taira. And Yaina writes the same thing in Shari Chubi, writes the moon then. Asusi Yagla Taira, person to do mitzvahs. That Avada shows that perhaps his heart is in the right place. He wants to do what the Rabbi Shalom wants. But Asusi Yagla Taira means to make a safeguard and offense so you'll do the mitzvahs and keep away from the Abbas. And in general, that's what our Chafas of Chazal are for. But that shows, Yerushalayim, and that shows that it's not just something extra, he wants to do it, but if he doesn't do it, it's okay. This shows this is my life, and this Yerushalayim, to make sure it gets done. Somebody told me just a story by the last year in is I believe it was, yeah, it was the last year in so my grandfather was there, and you know they were getting ready to have a mincha, and somebody was showing him his place, you know, on the days, and he said, "I'm, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go up after the mincha. I'll go up after mincha." <coughs> so I asked him why. Why? Because they're about to have a mincha. Such a young person, it takes me time to get there. By the time I get there, I might miss the name or two. We might miss the name. Don't pass up the opportunity. What an name is. You get them all the time, but and he had plenty of schusim. He didn't want to lose the opportunity to pass up an omen. But what did he do to make sure that he's not going to miss an omen? He wasn't sure that he was going to miss an omen. So that, that wasn't for sure, but I'm going to stay here. And after the omen, after the omen, I'll walk up and I'll go to my place. I was once by his house Friday afternoon. Came to wish him a happy birthday. It was an Arab Shabbos. His birthday is a week after Shavuos. Week after Shavuos. So we're talking about mid Sivan, June, the end of June, which is the Spitz, the latest Shabbos of, of the year. And he came home from Minnesota in Yeshiva. It was 1.30, came home around 2 o'clock. Didn't want to keep us. And we're going to know you guys have to go back for Shabbos. This was on the long, the long Shabbos, and Shabbos 7, 7, 8, 7 o'clock, the early Shabbos. I'm not picking her a little later. But forget about it, he wouldn't keep him up. That wasn't the point. Is he was going to set the table for Shabbos, and someone was, was uh, the person who was helping him says, Reverend, you want to do it now? Shabbos doesn't wait for anybody. Shabbos doesn't wait for anybody. Shabbos is in a few, quite a few hours. Shabbos doesn't wait for anybody. I have to make a now. You never know. You never know what could be. It wasn't, we're discussing this scenario specifically. Shabbos, just a for Shabbos. But it doesn't, 
It's not going to wait. Have that perspective. It's not, I'll deal with Shabbos when it comes. It's a siyot. Shabbos is important. It has a time in the clock. You will, but mash with Shubha, you have to make a fun now and not to pass it up. So I was going to make the, you know, when my children, the bris and the being a shtickle delayed, we weren't sure when the bris was going to be, and there was a chance it was going to be, uh, till, you know, till the baby was <coughs> not being yellow or wasn't that yellow anymore. It was a question of maybe the bris was going to be Friday, if not Friday morning, Friday afternoon, and also after Pesach. Not the shortest Shabbos, not the short, maybe not the longest, not the shortest. So I asked him, I said, Zadie, you can make the bris uh, Friday afternoon. You know, he's going to come? I said, no, I'm not going to come. And he loved the family Simchan. He was there all the time. And that was very dear to him. But I'm not saying this necessarily la halacha. There are problems la halacha about travel on Shabbos. But his attitude was, you think, I, mean, I live in Muncie, I don't live in Toronto. I mean, it's, 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 it's an hour, it could be, it could be more, I mean, yes, there could be traffic or whatever, but we told many hours, if you had time, it would have been short, could leave as soon as he wants, so he's not going to take the risk, the risk, it's not the biggest risk, but if you make a siyog, if you care about Shabbos, if you care about the missus, if you care about Pastor Shalom not to be over our leaders, and then you'll make the necessary arpapas, you're not going to get involved in sticky situations in the first place that might ultimately lead to, oh, might ultimately lead you to, to a serious shayla and pass for shalom to maybe be or, or, or miss up the opportunity for a mitzvah. And that's just about what's important and keeping your sense of priority and setting up mitzvah uh, sachayim. So again, that's, that, that's what I saw in him came from this awareness of what we're here for, and therefore, I'm just gonna do the best I can. And so if his best took him to where he was, but everybody's supposed to do the best they can. And because of that, because of that is, is you know, his any was stuck. <coughs> he wasn't doing anything in his mind so extra special, just doing what he felt he needed to do. And he didn't get distracted. Nothing was able to close. Nothing was able to take him away from that mission and that responsibility that we all have. To take whatever we could take and apply it to ourselves and do our best. But of course, will make us great, greater than we are now, and as great as we can be.